This is code.org, and we're going to be tallying up the points for our code feeder quiz. So what this goes through is how they're scoring this, right? We saw the game here, start the quiz, where we select what's your favorite texture. Maybe I say velvety smooth. As we go through, this is going to explain in good detail, so make sure you read how the points are being tallied. For instance, maybe the first round, if the user selects, they're calling this A, right? They give a point for whatever this is, Tomatotron. Or if they select C, they give a point towards block, blockery, petter, trod. I don't know what they're calling their superheroes here. Right? And then on the next question, maybe this question, maybe A gives a point for the blockery and B gives a point for uh, the tomato. And they're just adding up those points at the end to see which one has the most. I'm not sure what they do with the tie yet, but regardless, that's what they're saying. All right. So create a set of conditional statements using if, else if, and else in order to increment add by one, don't let this word scare you, the proper result by one. What are they gonna? Use the user answer variable to test the user's response. Okay, so let's look for a user answer. So when they say variable, they are talking specifically about this parameter. So let's look at one here. One. Code set, code a set of conditionals to categorize answers based on which button. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my blocks, and we're going to need a control block. And we need an if and an else, and I'm just going to slop it down here. And if I hit the little plusy thing, bloop, now I get an if, else if, and else. All right, so now I have my conditional. And what they're asking us to check is we want to check their user answer. I'm going to go. So I want to know if the user answer is equal to A, B, C, or D, because we're going to be setting it up so that this means A, this means B, this means C, this means D. All right, so they're already passing in the value user answer for a question one method. So what I can do is I want to check for equality. Here's the double equal sign, which means, hey, does this equal something? And I'm going to go user answer equals equals, and I'm going to check for the letter or the char one. All right, now where is this gonna happen? Let's go ahead and look. Are we calling this guy yet? Ah, so how this all gets called, guys, underneath the hood is on the event that button 1A is clicked. Okay, so let's see what button 1A is. Let me, oop, up, uh, oh, that should be it. So button 1A is this first button here, right? And it doesn't have the image there, but that's the first one. That's the silky whatever texture. So when I click that, what happens? Okay, on the event that I click button 1A, question 1, which is my method way up there, has to run. What data is passed to it? The letter A. And so then I go, it goes, what the heck is question 1? Smack. And it runs this method with the data with user answer being equal to A. And now I'm gonna check, well, if it's equal to A, or what if it's equal to B? I'm gonna hit this plusy thing one more time because we have four letters. And let me fill this in. Now make sure you do the quotes because otherwise it's not gonna recognize it. Okay, so now if it's equal to A, I'm just gonna be simple for this. I'm gonna say this is gonna be equal to result one, two, three, and four, because that's where we're keeping our total, our tally. So result one is how many times they select something that impacted that, so on and so forth. Let me slam these in and I'll explain. Okay, so now if user answer is equal to A, result one gets one added. So result one, and you can be fancy and just do result one plus plus, result equals plus one, there's a uh, plus equals one, there's a lot of fancy ways. I like it like this, it's more readable. So the old value of result, if they select A, is equal to whatever the, the new value of result is equal to whatever the old value of result was. <coughs> and right now the old value would be zero if this is our first round, plus one. Well, zero plus one is one. Now remember with an if statement, once the any of these are true, none of this, wow, that color's None of this can run. If the first one's true, the rest will not run, right? Or maybe this is false because I selected B, then this is true. So now result two goes up and none of the rest of this runs. Then we set the screen to question two. 
Now in this level, they're asking us, or bubble, they're asking us to do this for each question. I'm gonna be lazy, I'm gonna hit show text. You can also do it with a box, but I find it easy with show text sometimes. And I'm gonna go zoop, copy and paste because it's gonna be really similar. Right click, paste. Command V, Command C to copy on a Mac, Command V to paste. Uh, control C on a computer, Control V, same with Chromebook. I'm gonna do that. And now I'm gonna change these right away though because, oh, just kidding, same deal. Now I might need to change a little bit, but let me go down to question three as well. So if I do want, you know, for instance, let's see, uh, sure. Maybe I want option A here, buttery, to not add to result one, because result one was, I have no idea, but maybe I wanna rearrange what these are equal to. For now, I'm gonna leave them as is, but that will be something to, config to configure later on as we go through. You can find location of the starter code. Great, and here's the final result, which I guess we will be doing in the next portion of this lesson. Cool, looking good thus far. So onward.